Spoiler warning. So, the mysterious Crow Girl, the one who's been watching from the shadows, just like Itachi. I'm gonna quickly go over every single thing we know of her up to chapter 116, and then throw in some speculation at the end, which I think will interest a lot of you. But yeah, let's just get right into it. For starters, the first we see of her is in chapter 75, when Akko and Akane had gone to visit Goro's old place. Akko remembers when he was Goro, during Serena's last moments. When she gave him the keychain, she got B. Komachi's concert when she was healthy. He promises to cherish it forever. Serena giggles softly and with her last words, tells Goro she loves him. Remembering that, Akko places his hand on his cheek where Serena last touched Goro. Of course, best girl Akane immediately suspects something with those eagle eyes of hers. She's always watching out for Akko, I'm telling you. But God's surely kind, isn't he? We suddenly see those words alongside a crow. Then we see who they came from. There, with a bunch of crows sitting on a tree above, is a mysterious little girl. She mentions that God supposedly brought two people together who never had a mother, in a sense. After all, Goro never knew his mother too, since she had passed away at birth, and Serena's parents preferred to ignore her existence, not even showing up when she was on her deathbed. God brought those two together with the mother who gave birth to soulless children. And with an ominous expression, she says perhaps there's more that meets the eye. Like, yeah, of course. There's more that meets the eye. I'm sure most of us have thought it was suspicious that Goro and Serena happen to be reborn together as children of their favorite idol. This is why I say there's definitely supernatural elements at play here, and it's clear this crow girl knows what's up. Ms. Itachi Jr. is very sus and doesn't even try to hide it. We see her again in Chapter 79. This time, it's Ruby who's walking by herself and holding on to the same keychain Serena had given Goro. The reason Ruby has it is because she found it with the body of Goro. I know, it's crazy how it's like coming full circle. Now Ruby's holding on to that keychain Akko is just remembering. However, she hears someone say, oh, no, no, no. That's just wrong. Of course, with crows around her, it's the same mysterious crow girl. This time, actually calling Ruby out for taking the keychain from Goro's corpse. The fact that they're even interacting is mind-blowing to me. This mysterious entity, whoever she is, clearly does not care about interfering. She seems to be trolling Ruby with, I guess, a cocky smile on her face. She literally doesn't care and finds this amusing. Ruby doesn't even say anything before the girl sarcastically asks if she had a close relationship with that doctor. Like the fact she even brought it up should be setting off alarm bells in Ruby's head. Like how does this random toddler even know about this? She even says she knows how Ruby feels. Of course, that gets a reaction from Ruby who says a child like her wouldn't get it. To leave her alone since she's in a bad mood. Which makes sense considering she's getting over finding Goro's dead body. Yet the crow girl has no chill and taunts her again with an ooh scary. She then asks if Ruby is sure she wants to leave. After all, she knows what Ruby wishes to know, which actually causes Ruby to stop. She then goes on to explain the events at the start of the story in a vague manner. A long time ago, a famous idol gave birth in secret at this very same hospital, and that deceased doctor was the one in charge of her delivery. The doctor went missing for a long time, but the day he disappeared was the day the idol gave birth to twins. Mind you, unlike Aqua, Ruby never knew all the details, so this is news to her. The next part here is actually probably the most important detail. Crow Girl confirms that there were actually two suspicious men wandering around the hospital at the same time. One was a college student and the other appeared to be someone in middle school. We already knew that the college student was a stalker who killed Ai. However, Ruby asks about the other one, the middle schooler. And of course, the Crow Girl leaves us in the dark after saying it's Ruby's duty to find out before disappearing Itachi style. So with that said, the Crow Girl is actually Itachi reincarnated in another world. Itachi can transcend realities. Nah, JK, but that is all we've seen of the Crow Girl so far in the story. All we have are clues to who she really is. This part is mostly speculation, but we have to take into account that there seems to be supernatural aspects at play. The examples being reincarnation and the fact that Aka, the writer of the story, has already dabbled in Japanese folklore in his stories, like Kaguya-sama. Obviously, Kaguya is the most direct reference. But there are other characters who are based off Kaguya suitors from the folklore. This ain't a Kaguya vid though, but it shows that Akka is no stranger based on themes around Japanese folklore. As for the Crow Girl, it's very likely that she's based off Yadagarasu, a god in Japanese mythology. In fact, she may even be the very same deity. The Crow is actually a symbol of rebirth, which is interesting considering the aspect of rebirth we've already seen in the story. Yadagarasu is also known as the 8 span crow and just bruh. Look at the first panel she ever appears in, and let's count all the crows we fully see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I mean, if that doesn't convince you there's symbolism, I don't know what will. 
Like even the pound before, there's just a single crow with the line. God is surely kind, isn't he? I mean, clearly something is up. Also, Yadagrasu is actually a guide provided by the gods to those deemed worthy. And you know what guided Ruby to find Goro's body? A crow. Even before that, when we see Ruby visit her mother's grave a few chapters back, a crow appears just before Ruby unknowingly walks past her father of all people, frickin' Hikaru. And you know what else? Hikaru's coat when he first appeared is all black with a feathery design. That may just be the style of the jacket, but still. And lastly, back to the concept of rebirth and the events that happen directly after Crow Girl's appearance. Ruby, the happy-go-lucky and cheerful sister that was one of the few spots of brightness in Aqua's life. You know what happened to her when she encountered the Crow Girl? Ruby saw the bones of the man she loved. She learned that the one who killed her idol and mother was also the one behind Goro's death. And they're still out there. Perhaps, just as the Crow Girl wished, Ruby lost her light and became plunged into the depths of despair. The darkness Ruby was shown caused her to awaken the Dark Star eyes in both their eyes. The dual Black Star and gone. Just before this, Aqua had a little rebirth of his own, seemingly freed of revenge when he believed his father was dead. He moved on, but perhaps the gods needed someone else to continue in his stead. So perhaps, that's why the Crow Girl directly interfered to guide Ruby down the path of revenge instead. Why are there deities interfering with this world? What game are the gods playing? Are Ruby and Aqua just pawns on a board? Puppets with strings? Subscribers to this channel? Nah, but you can subscribe because that's all a topic for another video. Just like this video over here showing how exactly Ruby lost her light. Of course, I really appreciate every single one of you who clicked and got here. Please consider leaving a like and dropping a comment down below too. Thanks again and peace.